During a routine dive off the coast, Colton's adventure took a heart-stopping turn when he noticed an unusual glint in the mouth of a passing shark. Driven by a mix of fear and fascination, he managed to carefully extract the object, his hands shaking as he held his breath underwater. The moment he recognised what he had pulled from the depths, his blood ran cold. Colton immediately swam back to the surface as quickly as he could. He couldn't believe that he had just found this in a random shark's mouth. He wanted to show it to his friends up on the boat, knowing they would be absolutely shocked. So when he finally made it to the surface, he yelled, Guys, you have to see this! What took you so long, Colton? We were worried, his friends said. But he just grinned, holding the object behind his back. What is it? Why are you smiling like that? one of them asked, and Colton finally revealed what he had found. A camera. He still had no idea that soon he would regret ever even finding this thing. It would put him in grave danger and change his life forever. Their mouths fell open when they heard that Colton had actually taken it out of a shark's mouth. Are you out of your mind? You could have lost your arm or worse, they told him, but Colton just waved it off. He had always been fearless, and that would come in handy on the adventure that was awaiting them. But whose camera was it? What pictures would they find on it? And to what kind of danger would it lead them? Colton and his friends inspected the camera more closely, wanting to find out who it belonged to. Sadly, its battery was empty, and they were unable to turn it on, but they recognised that it was an underwater camera, so it should still be intact. They agreed to leave it for the time being and decided they would charge it as soon as they got home. For the rest of the day, the group of friends continued diving and enjoying their time in the water. Colton even forgot about the camera for a while until they all returned to the ship when it was time to go home. I can't wait to look at the photos on this thing, he said, and his friends nodded in agreement. They still had no idea what they were going to find. They all went to Colton's house and ordered pizza as they usually did after a day in the water. They were exhausted, but they were even more curious about that camera. So, Colton found a compatible charger and plugged it in while they ate. He was excited to see what kind of pictures were on there, but really, he was completely unprepared for what he would discover. Colton was really impatient, and he could barely wait for the camera to charge, but as it didn't have an SD card, waiting for it to charge was really the only way he could see its contents. He whooped when the red blinking light finally stopped, indicating that the camera was fully charged. It is time, my friends, he said, as he ceremoniously removed the charger and pressed the on button. They all gathered around the camera, each wanting a good view of the screen. As Colton turned it on, they patiently waited for something to appear on the screen. They still weren't entirely sure that the camera would even work. It took a while for the camera to start up, but they all gasped excitedly when it finally did. Quickly, let's see what the last picture was. Colton pressed some buttons and suddenly a photo popped up on the screen. Before they could take a good look at it though, the screen started glitching and it went black. Shit, he called out, and he tried turning the camera on and off again a few times, but it didn't work. Luckily, Colton was a quick thinker and he was able to connect the camera to his laptop. His idea worked and they all gathered around him a second time, hoping that they'd finally get to see those photos now. As the file popped up on Colton's screen, he smiled and he clicked on a random photo. Colton clicked through the photos rapidly. First came a series of images of colourful coral reefs teeming with fish. Jellyfish floated serenely in another, their tentacles trailing like delicate lace. Then came a turtle, its shell patterned and ancient as it swam lazily across the frame. His friends pointed and laughed at an awkward-looking fish, capturing everyone's attention with its puffed cheeks and glaring eyes. As they flipped through more aquatic shots, a different kind of image appeared. A small boat bobbed among the waves, clear under the sunlit sky. People were visible on deck, moving around. Was this guy spying on them or something? Colton muttered as he leaned closer. The group shuffled in their seats, intrigued by this unexpected shift from underwater serenity to human activity. Zooming in on the boat photos, Colton's brow furrowed. 
The connection between the vibrant sea life and these boat scenes was elusive. Who are these people? he wondered aloud. The images showed the boat from various angles, as if the photographer was circling it, capturing every detail. The friends speculated wildly about the relationship between the underwater world and the boat's presence. The next set of photos transitioned from the boat at a distance to a closer perspective. It was clear now the photographer had boarded the boat. Photos showed parts of the deck, ropes and a cooler. One blurry photo seemed to be taken hastily inside the cabin, the edges blurred as if snapped in a hurry. He got on the boat, Colton announced, tension rising in his voice. The last photo sequence was chaotic. A half-eaten sandwich on a paper plate, a spilled drink, a pair of sunglasses askew on a seat. The final shot was of the boat's floor. The camera apparently dropped. What happened here? Colton's friend whispered. They all leaned in, the mystery deepening with these silent, still testimonies of a sudden, unexplained interruption. As they continued browsing the images, one last photo loaded, showing a bald man staring directly at the camera with a stern, unsettling look. His presence was intimidating, overshadowing the sunny boat backdrop. Who is this guy? Colton exclaimed as everyone around the laptop tensed up. The mood shifted instantly. They knew this was no ordinary holiday snapshot. Without hesitation, Colton began transferring all the images from the camera to his laptop. We need to keep these safe, he declared, as he created a new folder labelled Boat Mystery. His hands moved quickly across the keyboard, ensuring every image was backed up. Once done, he looked up at his friends, nodding, OK, they're all copied. The group huddled around the kitchen table, weighing their options. We should probably tell someone about this, right? One friend suggested. Nods followed, and Colton agreed. Yeah, let's report it. This could be serious. They discussed how the bald man's harsh gaze didn't sit right with them, and calling the police felt like the responsible thing to do. Colton picked up his phone and dialed the local police station. Hi, we found a camera with some concerning images, including pictures of a man who looks, well, menacing. The officer on the line was calm, asking them to bring the camera and the images as potential evidence. Can you come down to the station? he asked. Sure, we'll be there, Colton replied, hanging up. The friends gathered everything they needed, the camera, Colton's laptop, and a few notes they had made about the images. Let's get going, Colton said as he grabbed his keys. The drive to the police station was quiet, each of them lost in their own thoughts about the implications of their discovery and what the police would make of it. As soon as they entered the station... Officer Gary led Colton to a small room. So, you found this camera in a shark's mouth? He asked, eyebrows raised. Colton nodded, explaining how they were diving when they spotted it. The officer scribbled notes, his expression unreadable. That's quite the story, he muttered, glancing up from his notepad. Colton detailed how the camera ended up in their hands, but Officer Gary seemed sceptical. A shark, really? That's new he commented dryly. Colton persisted, describing the dive and the exact moment of discovery. The officer's scepticism hung in the air, thick and palpable, as he continued to jot down notes, his eyes flicking between Colton and the paper. Despite his doubts, Officer Gary took the camera and assured them it would be examined forensically. We'll look into the photos and the camera itself, he said, sealing it in an evidence bag. Colton watched, feeling a mix of relief and anxiety as the officer tagged and logged the camera, preparing it for further investigation. You're free to go for now, Officer Gary said as he stood up. But don't stray too far. We might need more from you. Colton nodded, understanding the gravity of the situation. As he walked out of the interrogation room, he felt the weight of the officer's parting words, knowing this might just be the beginning of something more involved. Stepping out of the police station, Colton felt a chill despite the warm afternoon sun. The thought of being tangled in a potential criminal investigation made his stomach turn. As he got into his car, the uncertainty of what lay ahead loomed over him. 
He drove off, his mind racing with all sorts of scenarios about the mysterious camera and the menacing man in the photos. Back at his house, Colton pored over digital copies of the photos on his laptop. He zoomed into backgrounds, faces and odd corners, searching for anything he might have missed. His fingers flew over the keyboard, enhancing images, hoping to find a clue that could explain the strange series of events captured by the camera. While digging through online articles and forums, Colton stumbled upon a missing persons report about an aquatic photographer who had disappeared a few months ago. The description matched the camera's model and the style of the photos. It seemed too much of a coincidence. Could this be the same guy? Colton murmured, piecing the timeline together. Realising the camera might have belonged to the missing photographer, Colton felt a surge of responsibility to uncover more. He printed out the missing person's poster and laid it next to the printed photos from the camera. The connection seemed more than just plausible. It felt urgent, pushing Colton to think about what he could do next. Determined, Colton mapped out his return to the harbour. He jotted down notes on what to look for and prepared a small bag with his camera and binoculars. I need to see if that boat is still there, he thought planning his trip for early morning when the harbour would be less crowded and his presence less noticeable. That evening, Colton spent hours reading every article and blog post he could find about the missing photographer. He learned about his projects, his passion for marine life, and how he often worked alone, which made him vulnerable. With each detail, Colton felt more connected to the photographer's story, understanding the risks he faced in pursuit of his craft. Early in the morning, Colton arrived at the harbour, his eyes scanning the moored boats. He moved quietly, avoiding any conversations. His phone, prepped with the boat's image from the photos, was discreetly held in his hand as he compared each vessel to the picture. His heart raced with every passing second, hoping to spot the one that matched. Colton kept his investigation under wraps, especially the copies of the photos stored securely on his laptop. He knew the importance of maintaining secrecy, aware that any slip might expose his intent. While he searched, he acted like any other visitor, occasionally stopping to admire the boats as if he were just a curious tourist. Finally, Colton saw it. The boat from the photos was moored at the far end of the harbour. He ducked behind a stack of fishing nets, watching the boat through binoculars. He made sure to stay back, blending in with the environment, his heart pounding as he confirmed it was indeed the same vessel. As he observed, the bald man from the photos walked onto the deck of the boat. Colton's grip tightened around the binoculars. There he was, the man with the menacing look moving around the boat with a sense of authority. Colton snapped a few discreet photos, ensuring not to draw any attention to himself. Suddenly, a harbour worker approached Colton, whispering urgently, Be careful around that boat, mate. The owner's bad news. Before Colton could respond, the worker glanced nervously towards the boat and quickly disappeared into the crowd. Colton's mind raced with the implications of the warning, feeling the gravity of what he might be getting into. Colton's encounter with the harbour worker had left him more curious and concerned than before. He watched the boat and its occupants with increased interest, trying to gauge the nature of their activities. Each glance towards the bald man and his associates added layers to his worry. He wondered about the stories the boat could tell and what dangers might lurk aboard. Deciding to gather more information, Colton stayed at the harbour, watching from different angles and noting anyone who boarded or left the boat. He discreetly used his phone to take notes and make a rough sketch of the boat's layout. Planning his next steps, he considered how he could learn more without raising suspicion among the boat's crew or the harbour regulars. Just as he was about to leave, Colton overheard a conversation around the corner of a shipping container. Two men were talking in hushed tones. The police had found his camera. They'll come looking for him in no time now, one said anxiously. Colton's ears perked up. This was a direct connection to what he had discovered. His pulse quickened as he realised the stakes were high. Understanding the immediate danger of being overheard or spotted, Colton quickly slipped away from the area. He made his way back through the maze of containers and equipment, keeping his head down and his pace steady. 
Once he felt a safe distance from the conversation in the boat, he hurried his steps, eager to avoid any potential confrontations. From a safer location, Colton zoomed in with his camera lens, capturing detailed shots of the boat and any visible crew members. He focused on documenting everything he could from this new vantage point, ensuring he had enough visual evidence. Each click of the camera added to his growing dossier on the mysterious and increasingly sinister boat. Returning home, Colton's mind was a whirlwind of anxiety and determination. He felt the weight of what he had learned, yet there was a firm resolve to see things through. Walking through his front door, he paused, taking a deep breath, preparing mentally for what lay ahead. He knew the challenge was daunting, but necessary to uncover the truth. First thing, Colton called the police station, seeking any updates about the camera or the boat. His voice was steady as he asked for Officer Gary, hoping for some piece of information that might help him piece together the mysterious events. He waited on the line, tapping his fingers impatiently on the kitchen counter, eager for any new leads. The response from the police was disheartening. No new information at this time, came the reply. Colton's frustration mounted as he realised he was on his own in this. With no updates or leads from the police, he hung up the phone, feeling more isolated but even more resolved to continue his investigation. Later, Colton gathered his closest friends to share his plan. I need to get on that boat and see for myself, he asserted, laying out his strategy to covertly approach and investigate the boat. His friends exchanged worried glances, expressing their concerns about the danger involved, but Colton's determination was palpable. Despite his friend's protests and concerns for his safety, Colton began gathering the necessary supplies for his covert mission. He packed a small bag with a flashlight, a camera and some other essentials. Each item was chosen with care, aimed at keeping him safe and discreet during his investigation. His resolve was clear. He was ready to take the risk to find the truth. Under the veil of night, Colton approached the harbour, his backpack filled with essentials for his investigation. He moved silently, blending into the shadows as he neared the water. The cool night air and faint sounds of lapping waves heightened his senses. He checked his gear one last time before stepping onto the dock, his focus sharp. He drove to the harbour and parked his car a safe distance away, ensuring it wouldn't attract attention. Slipping out of the car, Colton pulled his hat down low and started his approach on foot. He stuck to less illuminated paths, moving swiftly but cautiously towards the area where the boat was moored, constantly watching over his shoulder. Colton crept among the large shipping containers stacked near the boat, looking for any sign of illicit activity or discarded evidence that could be linked to the boat. His eyes darted around, seeking anything out of place. He carefully lifted tarps and peered into open containers, his hands gloved to avoid leaving fingerprints. As he sifted through a particularly cluttered area, the sound of footsteps startled him. Colton quickly ducked behind a large blue container, holding his breath. He peered around the edge, his heart pounding in his chest. The footsteps grew louder, then softer, indicating someone passing by unknowingly. He waited, ensuring he remained unseen. Once the coast was clear, Colton resumed his surveillance. Suddenly, he caught sight of the bald man from the photos. The man boarded the boat with a brisk, purposeful stride. Colton's anxiety surged as he watched, recognising the gravity of the situation. He adjusted his position to keep the man in view, wondering what might happen next. Colton froze as a scream pierced the night, echoing off the metal containers. His heart raced. He feared for his own safety as much as the source of the cry. Crouching low, he scanned the dimly lit area, hoping not to be spotted. The scream had come from nearby, and he knew he had to investigate, despite the risk. Moving cautiously towards the sound, Colton found a container with its door slightly ajar. He approached silently, his nerves on edge. The harbour was mostly silent now, except for the distant clanking of chains and the occasional splash of water against the docks. He pushed the door open further, peering inside with apprehension. Inside the container, the dim light revealed a shocking scene. A man was sitting on a chair, 
a bag over his head, his body slumped forward. Colton's breath caught in his throat as he stepped closer, his hands trembling slightly. He quickly removed the bag, revealing the face of a man, disheveled and frightened. Colton recognized the man immediately. It was the missing photographer from the reports. His hands were tied, but Colton acted quickly, freeing him. You're safe now, he assured the photographer, who was visibly shaken but relieved. They exchanged a brief, grateful look, a silent acknowledgement of the rescue. As they prepared to leave the container, sirens wailed in the distance, getting louder. Colton knew they had to move fast. He quickly loosened the ropes, binding the photographer's hands completely and guided him to a safer hiding spot among the shadows. They crouched together, waiting for the right moment to emerge, hoping help was on the way for the right reasons. As the police arrived, they moved quickly to detain the perpetrators on the boat. Colton watched from a distance, relieved as the officers handcuffed the bald man and his associates. Thanks to Colton's tip, and the evidence he had gathered, the police were prepared. The scene unfolded rapidly, with law enforcement securing the area and ensuring no one else was in danger. The photographer, now safe, stood beside Colton as they watched the arrests. His relief was palpable, a stark contrast to his earlier fear. Officers escorted the criminals to police vehicles, their heads bowed. The photographer looked at Colton, his eyes expressing a depth of gratitude that went beyond words. The danger had passed, and he was finally free from his captivity. It was revealed that the photographer had inadvertently captured images of the criminals using their boat for transporting illegal goods. When they realised he had potentially incriminating photos, they decided to silence him. The police pieced together the operation from the photos and information Colton provided grateful for the unexpected clues that led to the unravelling of the criminal network. The police publicly lauded Colton for his bravery and quick thinking. His actions had not only saved the photographer, but also helped dismantle a significant criminal operation. The local news arrived, eager to cover the story of a local hero. Colton shared his experience modestly, emphasising teamwork and the importance of community vigilance. Normalcy slowly returned to the harbour, now under closer scrutiny by local authorities. Additional patrols were set up and new security measures were discussed to prevent similar occurrences. The community felt a renewed sense of safety, thankful for the peaceful resolution. Colton looked around, satisfied with the outcome, knowing the harbour would be a safer place for everyone. Once fully recovered, Jonas met with Colton to express his gratitude. I owe you my life, he said earnestly, shaking Colton's hand with both of his. They sat together at a local cafe, sharing stories and reflecting on the ordeal. Jonas's thanks were heartfelt, acknowledging Colton's courage and quick action that led to his rescue and the criminal's capture. Together, Jonas and Colton decided to share their story with the local community. At a town hall meeting, they recounted their ordeal, highlighting the dangers and the importance of vigilance. Their shared experience fostered a strong sense of unity among the attendees, who listened intently, inspired to be more observant and supportive of one another in times of need. Throughout the ordeal, Colton felt a profound appreciation for the support he received from his friends and the police. As he reflected on the events, he realised how crucial their encouragement and assistance were in handling the situation he made it a point to personally thank each friend and the officers involved, feeling a renewed sense of community and camaraderie. The experience left Colton with a deep respect for the unseen perils that lurked beneath the waves and around the seemingly calm harbour. He became more cautious and aware of his surroundings, whether he was diving or just near the water. This new awareness prompted him to advocate for safety measures and educate others about the potential dangers in their beloved marine environment. The narrative concluded with a community celebration by the harbour. It was a vibrant event, commemorating their collective resilience and the strengthened bonds among the residents. There was music, laughter and a shared sense of accomplishment.
Colton looked around at the smiling faces, proud of their community's response and the unity they had forged through adversity.